Welcome back to the second part of our introduction. Let us go out into the deep, into the sea. Our boat is moored here waiting to sail with you. We are going into the deep of the 12, the 12 apostles represented here in these wonderful icons. We are entering into the meaning of the 12. We are entering into God's project for humanity's salvation. And we are going to deal with the language we have in the whole Bible because the roots of the 12 go back to Genesis. We're talking about 12 apostles. What is apostle? Apostle is one who is sent. The very first one sent is the one sent by the Father, Jesus. So he is the apostle par excellence. And he takes humanity, human beings, us eventually, into his mission. He, as the Father sent me, so I send you, are his words at the Last Supper. So this is an extraordinary uh, intimacy with Christ, an extraordinary um, sharing in his mission. And there are many people who do that. Actually, preceding the apostles' fulfillment in their development, Mary Magdalene takes to them the good news of the resurrection. They didn't know about it yet until she came and she was sent by Jesus to them. And yet she's not one of the 12. Mary, the mother of Jesus, has an incredible role bringing the Savior into history. And she's not one of the 12. So we're going to look at what is this concept, the 12? And we will find it at the end in the book of Revelation and at the beginning in Genesis. So it is a deeply rooted concept with incredible import. We find in Genesis 35, Jacob has 12 sons and they're named. And that story, as you know, continues until the entry to the promised land and Moses allots the different sections of the promised land to each of the tribes. So that structure is very important. So they come in and, and support each other. They're one chosen people, articulated in 12 tribes. Unfortunately, afterwards, there's a civil war. They separate into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. After that, there's decay, corruption, decadence, and exile. And the tribes will never be together again. And part of the messianic expectation is that the 12 will come back together. Let us read a text or two from the New Testament to see how this is understood in the lives of the 12. In Matthew chapter 19, we already referred to the call of the 12 in Matthew 10, and then they were continually instructed by Jesus full time. Now we see something amazing in Matthew chapter 19. Amen, I say to you, at the very end of the chapter, that you who have followed me, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, when is that? Will yourselves sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Here we see an extraordinary linkage. And not only that, after the ascension, we have the 11. Well, actually the 11 really means the 12 minus one. It's not just 11 and that's it. It's a 12 minus one and they feel compelled by scripture and by the Holy Spirit driving them and through the words of Peter to elect a replacement for Judas. So the 12 is a very consistent institutional reality. And now let's go forward to the book of Revelation at the very end of the Bible. We came from the beginning in Genesis. We go to the end, so it's a thread all the way through. And here we read, in the heavenly kingdom, when Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem descends, there were 12 gates with names inscribed of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. Then were three gate, uh, there were three gates facing east, north, south, west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And here we have this reality of the foundational nature, this new bud of the renewed, redeemed people. 
in which are present the 12 tribes, but now it's gone out over the 144,000 and a multitude from all over. And at the foundation, the 12, names of the 12 apostles. This gives us a great insight into Jesus' project, which was not just to collect 12 individuals and convert them and transform their lives. It was to rebuild the chosen people for the entire work of grace for humanity, to be a light to the nations. The church has always understood itself as being uh, apostolic. That means connected to the apostles on three different levels. Number one, their witness is the connection point to Christ. Their teaching is the guiding of the church and it's always alive through their successors. What is marvelous is that Jesus has accomplished two amazing projects. First, one in each of the apostles, and the second project, rebuilding the chosen people. Let us go deep into the 12 now, and as we learn each one, we're actually getting into the whole 12 and the future of the church and our own lives.